Well, hi to my YouTube subscribers. I originally made this video in November of 2023 when the new eVisa application became available. I've now edited and reposted the video in order to include important information about the ticket you should supply for a multiple entry tourist visa. A number of people applying for an METV have had problems with this, so I wanted to clarify. Without any announcement that I'm aware of, Thai immigration has greatly simplified the process for obtaining a Thai tourist visa online, known as the e-visa. This applies to both single entry and multiple entry visas. And in addition, it appears that they're now using the same form for all countries, which was not the case in the past. This is a huge improvement. Now, many people have watched my previous video describing exactly how to fill out the online visa form. The form has changed enough now that I felt the need to make a new video. This video is not short, but it includes everything I've learned about Thai tourist visas over the past few years. Much of this information has come from comments from viewers like you, so thank you. First, you want to be sure that you need a visa. If you're visiting Thailand for 30 days or less, and you come from one of the many countries for which Thai tourist visa exemption is supported, you don't need a visa. You'll find a link to a list of these visa exempt countries in the description of this video. Just follow the signs to immigration when you arrive in Thailand. Show your passport and boarding pass, and you'll get stamped in for 30 days. And you can extend this by 30 days by filling out a form TM7 at any local immigration office after you arrive. Now, if you're staying between 31 and 60 days, you may want to get a 60-day single-entry tourist visa, or you can use the 30-day exemption plus a 30-day extension. Either will work. If you're staying in a large city like Bangkok or Pattaya, getting the 30-day extension can be a little bit of a hassle. For this reason, you might opt for the single-entry tourist visa, but if you stay in a smaller place like Patong Beach, where I am, the extension is much easier. So you could opt for the combination of a 30-day visa exemption plus a 30-day extension. Now, to use e-visa, you need to be from a country for which e-visa is supported. You'll find a link to a list in the description. Now, if you're from a country for which e-visa is not supported, then check to see if you're eligible for a visa on arrival. You'll find a link to these countries also in the description. Now, if you come from a country for which e-visa, visa exemption, and visa on arrival are not supported, then you'll need to apply in person at a Thai embassy or consulate, or use a visa agency. So from here on, we'll assume that you want to get a tourist visa using the e-visa process. You'll need to decide if you want a single entry or multiple entry visa. And I discuss this decision when we get to the relevant section of the application. I suggest that you watch this video before purchasing your air ticket. I discuss some important issues around the duration of your stay and the type of ticket that you purchase. Now, you can get as many tourist visas in sequence as you want, but if you get them via the e-visa process, you must first return to your home country or country of permanent residence. The e-visa process requires that you supply a ticket or sequence of tickets from your home country to Thailand and your application is submitted to the embassy or consulate associated with your home country. Now, it is possible to defeat this by supplying a ticket from your home country to Thailand, but actually flying in from a neighboring country. However, on arrival, immigration could detect this by seeing that you have not been stamped back into your home country before your most recent previous visit to Thailand. So, there's a chance that you'll be caught. People often ask how long it takes for immigration to process visa applications. And this varies with the particular embassy or consulate. I've had applications processed within hours by the New York consulate, 
the embassy in Ottawa can take four weeks. If you're concerned that your application is not being processed quickly enough, you can email or call the consulate. The address and phone numbers can be found at the embassy or consulate website. Now just a brief advertisement here. If you find this tutorial useful, please consider buying one of my novels. Slaughtering Girl is the story of a child born in China in the early years of the 20th century. The girl is a prodigy in the art of slaughtering, a talent that proves useful in the turbulent years to follow. The Vientiane Affair is a novel set during the CIA's secret war in Laos. Both books have plenty of sex, politics, history, love, and adventure. I recommend the audiobook versions. Please give one of them a try. See the description of this video for order information. Now start the e-visa process by going to your favorite browser. I'm using Google Chrome here. And you want to type in the URL thaievisa.go.th. So the first thing you'll see is a pop-up explaining that you no longer need to mail your passport to the embassy or consulate in your home country to get it stamped. This was the case before COVID. This change was a big simplification to the visa process. Now they will just email you a document that you can print out which serves as your visa. You'll need to have a printed copy of that document when you enter Thailand. Note that the notice is slightly inaccurate. In addition to printing the email, you will want to print the attachment to that email, which is your actual visa. Dismiss the pop-up by clicking Acknowledge. Now you can explore, do I need a tourist visa? Am I eligible to apply online? And which visa type should I apply for? And you can get a lot more useful information by paging down. Now, if you don't already have an account, click on Create Account in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see that you can choose either Individual or Agent, and Individual is the default. Unless you're a Visa agent, leave that default. So type in your first name, which is also known as your given name. Type in your family name, which is also known as your last name. Click on Country, and you'll get a pull-down that has a list of countries. Now you can find your country on that list and click on it, or you can just type the first three or four letters of the country, and then you'll get a shorter pull-down that's easier to select from. For the contact number, make sure you select the flag of the country whose country code is in your phone number, and then type in the rest of the number. Then type in your email. Type in a password. Now the password must contain at least eight characters. At least one character must be uppercase. At least one character must be lowercase. And at least one character must be a number. Then confirm the password by typing it again. And here you'll find the password rules repeated. Now agree to our terms and policies. You want to click that. And this is a CAPTCHA code. So once you, what you want to do is to copy this as best you can into the rectangle. Sometimes these are quite hard to read. So if you don't like the one that's appearing here, you can press on the circular arrow and you can get a new one that might be more readable. Remembering that the capture challenge is case sensitive. So now I get a message that tells me to check my inbox for the email johnsmith9999 at gmail.com, which is the email address that I gave. Now when I check my inbox, I see I've got an email that looks like this, and I click on the link in order to verify that email address. Now after you click on that verification, you should be able to sign in. If the sign in box is not shown, press sign in in the upper right. So now you can use the email that you associated with your eVisa account to log into the account. Supply the password. I have another CAPTCHA challenge to fill out. And now I'm into the eVisa website. Click on Apply for New Visa, the blue box in the upper left. 
So the first section is check your eligibility. Travel document holder of is the country associated with your passport. Again, type in the first few letters and you can select your country. Same with the current location. Now your current location will indicate the embassy or consulate to which you're applying. In the case of the United States, you're given a pop-up that describes the four different embassies or consulates in the United States. And for any given state or territory, it tells you the consulate to which you need to apply. So based on the pop-up that you just saw, you'll select the embassy or consulate that's appropriate for your location. Make sure that you do select the right embassy or consulate. If you select the wrong one, your application will be rejected and you won't get your money back. Now, for many countries, there's no choice of the embassy or consulate to which your application will go. In the case of some countries, you'll submit your application to a consulate in another country. For example, applicants residing in Ireland are directed to submit their applications to the Thai Embassy in London. We're now up to the section Purpose of Visit. Fill in your passport type. My passport is an ordinary passport. I suspect that most of you have the same. The purpose of your visit, if you're applying for a tourist visa, select Tourism Leisure Activities. Now there's a note that says applicant must travel within three months from the date of visa issuance. That actually applies to the single entry tourist visa, which is only valid for three months. The multi-entry tourist visa is valid for six months, but there's really no reason to apply more than a month in advance for either of these visa types. Now the visa type will automatically be filled in for you as tourist visa, and now, in the number of entries, you're going to select whether you want a single entry tourist visa or a multiple entry tourist visa. Most of you will be applying for the single entry tourist visa, which costs $40. It can be used once. It allows you to be stamped into Thailand for 60 days. And once you're in Thailand, you can extend that by 30 days. At the end of that 90 days, you will need to leave Thailand. So I'll select multiple entry. The multiple entry visa is good for 180 days and you can leave and re-enter Thailand as many times as you want to during that 180 days. Each time you enter or re-enter Thailand, you get stamped in for 60 days and that 60 days can be extended by 30 days for a total of 90 days. At the end of that 90 days, you will need to leave Thailand and re-enter on your multi-entry tourist visa if you want to stay longer. Now, if you re-enter Thailand just before your multi-entry tourist visa expires, you'll get another 90 days. So if you work things right, you can get almost 270 days in Thailand. In the description, you'll find a link to a video that describes how to do this. The multi-entry tourist visa costs $200 US. You'll see a note that says, if you're applying for multiple entries, you need to prove that you have a genuine reason to visit Thailand on a regular basis. You can ignore this. Immigration does not require a reason for a multiple entry visa, and there is no place to supply a reason. Click next in the blue box at the bottom right to go on to the next section. So now you're at the applicant information section of the application and here you're going to upload the biodata page of your passport. The biodata page is the single page that has your picture, your name, date of birth, passport number, and other information about you. Take a picture of the page with your smartphone and you can upload that. Note that the picture has to be in JPEG format and the size can't be greater than three megabytes. If you're an Apple user, you can open the file in preview and change the size so that the size is no more than three megabytes if the picture you took is larger than that. Note that the passport has to be valid for at least six months from the date of the visa application 
for a single entry tourist visa, and it has to be valid for one year from the date of submission for a multiple entry tourist visa. You can either drag and drop that photo, or you can browse and upload it that way. I'm going to do that. So you can see that my passport has been uploaded, but now you want to wait because after 15 seconds or so, you're going to see a pop-up that asks you to confirm the information in your passport. And that information will be automatically added to your application. You definitely want to wait for this pop-up. Now, as you can see, I didn't actually upload my own passport. I uploaded a sample passport provided by the U.S. government. Now, the optical character recognition in this application did a pretty bad job of reading the sample because it was very low resolution. In some cases, the optical character recognition works very well. In other cases, as in this case, it doesn't. The important thing is to check the pop-up carefully to see if there are errors and then make sure all of these errors are corrected in your application. In the next section, they want you to upload a passport style photo and you can see examples of what is allowed and not allowed by clicking on the examples. This actually takes a second to upload. Take the picture with your smartphone. Again, you can use Preview or some other application to reduce the size so the photo is no more than three megabytes. And again, it has to be in JPEG format. You can drag and drop or you can browse. I'm going to browse. Now, very often you will get a pop-up saying that there's a problem with the picture. So just wait a second for this pop-up. Here, they detected a problem with the photo. Now, in fact, there's nothing wrong with this photo. I've used this photo and gotten visas before with this photo. So that is just a warning. Check to make sure after you get that warning that there is no problem with your picture, but it's only a warning. You can go ahead and use it. If there really is some problem, uh, immigration will get back to you by email and tell you to submit a different picture. But this picture is fine. Now, fill in the personal information section. In this case, the title and the gender are filled in correctly. But because of the sample passport that I used, the first name, middle name, and family name are not filled in correctly. So I'm going to fill those in correctly now. If you have a former name, you can supply that. I don't. If you want to provide your name in your native alphabet, you can do that. I'm not sure exactly why you would want to do that. For your contact number, choose the flag of the country associated with your phone number and fill in the phone number. Fill in your email. Your country of nationality is the country associated with your passport. You can indicate if you have dual nationality or a second nationality, that is that you have another passport, I'm not sure why you would want to indicate this. If you do indicate yes, you will be asked for information about your second nationality. Indicate your nationality or citizenship at birth. For most people, that will be the same as your country of nationality. Note that that field was filled in for me by the passport scan. Your place of birth is your country of birth, and then next to that, you indicate your city of birth. Use the calendar pop-up to indicate your date of birth, or you can type in the date of birth directly. But be careful. If you make a mistake, this will revert to the current date. So after you fill in the date, look at it carefully to make sure it's actually your birth date. I'd keep marital status simple. Just indicate either single or married. We're now on to the travel document section. My type of travel document was filled in for me as passport, and the travel document number was also filled in from the passport. Enter these if they're incorrect or if they weren't filled in. The place of issue is the country of issue. Use the calendar pull-downs to indicate the date of your passport issue and the date of your passport expiry and you'll find this on the BioData page of your passport. If you don't use the calendar but enter these directly, be sure that they're correct 
Remember, if you make a mistake, this field will revert to the current date and you'll get an email from the embassy or consulate asking for the correct date. We're now up to the address information section of the application. So fill in the street address associated with your home address, the city, and the country. And then they ask whether your permanent address is the same as your current address. Now, for most people, the answer will probably be yes, but they don't actually tell you whether the address you just filled in is meant to be your current address or your permanent address. In any case, if you specify that your permanent address is not the same as your current address, then you'll be asked to supply another address. Now, this situation can happen if you're a citizen of one country, for example, Great Britain, but you're a permanent resident of another country, for example, the US, and you're applying from that country. You can do that if you are a permanent resident of that second country. So in that case, you probably would want to specify the two addresses. Now we're on to the employment detail section of the application. They ask you for an occupation from a pull down. Now, depending on what you choose as your occupation, you will get different questions. So for example, if I specify business owner, then I'll be asked for the name of the company or institute and my annual income. If I specify retired, then I'm only asked for my annual income. Now it's a good idea to hit the yellow save rectangle and then click the blue next box. Now we're up to the travel information section of the application. Again, you'll see the note that says the applicant should not apply for a visa more than three months before the date of intended arrival. Generally, one month is plenty. But note that the multi-entry tourist visa is good for six months from the date of issue. Now fill in your intended date of arrival in Thailand and your intended date of departure from Thailand using the calendar pull downs or you can fill it in directly. But remember, if you fill it in directly and make a mistake, the date will revert to the current date. So be careful, review these dates carefully after you've filled them in. With the single entry tourist visa, filling in these dates is easy because you're going to have a ticket to Thailand and either a return ticket or an onward ticket to another country both of those tickets will have dates and you simply enter those dates. When you fill in the calendar pull downs, you'll notice that underneath your duration of stay will be filled in for you. That duration of stay can actually be up to 90 days. So you get stamped in for 60 days, but Thai immigration assumes that you're going to get a 30 day extension on your visa at a local tourist office. So they will give you a total of 90 days. If your dates of travel change after you've been granted the visa, don't worry about this. Thai immigration doesn't actually care whether you arrive on the date that you initially specified, but you do want to make sure that your stay does not exceed 90 days. Some airlines like Air Canada don't understand this. They'll check for a return ticket that's within 60 days of your arrival in Thailand thinking that that's the rule. So if you're planning to stay more than 60 days, check with your airline to make sure that they won't give you a hard time when you try to board your flight to Thailand. This has definitely happened to people. There are workarounds. You can buy an inexpensive onward ticket for within 60 days. And I discuss this in some of my other videos. Now, if you're applying for a multiple entry tourist visa, I recommend that you supply only a one-way ticket from your home country to Thailand or a sequence of tickets from your home country to Thailand if you're stopping in other countries before your visit to Thailand. I often get comments from people who have supplied a round-trip ticket or a one-way ticket plus an onward ticket complaining that immigration is asking them by email for more tickets. To avoid this problem, if you're applying for an METV, just supply a one-way ticket to Thailand or a sequence of tickets to Thailand 
from your home country. If you supply a round-trip ticket or an onward ticket, you are running a risk of having immigration ask you for more tickets. I have yet to hear from anyone who applied for an METV, supplied only a one-way ticket from their home country, and was denied the visa. So please, pay attention to this. This has happened often enough that I have revised this video to provide this advice. Now, since you only have a one-way ticket to Thailand for your METV, what should you enter as your departure date? I recommend that you specify a date that will give you a duration of stay of 60 days or less. An METV allows you to leave and re-enter Thailand multiple times while the visa is valid. The departure date they are asking for is the date of your first departure from Thailand which normally happens within 60 days of your arrival or 90 days if you get a 30-day extension. Immigration doesn't ask to see a ticket for this departure. So the safest date to put in is a date that is 60 days or less after your arrival date. I have not heard of cases where immigration has questioned this. Now, if you have an METV, and you have only a one-way ticket, as I have recommended, it's a good idea to check with the airline before you leave for Thailand to make sure that they will not ask you for a return or onward ticket. They shouldn't ask you for this, but some airlines, like Air Canada, don't always understand these rules. If you explain to them that you only need a one-way ticket for an METV, and they don't accept this, you could buy a cheap onward ticket from Thailand to a neighboring country like Malaysia or Cambodia or Vietnam for about $60 US. That ticket should be dated within 60 days of your arrival in Thailand. You could also get a throwaway onward ticket for $10 from bookonwardticket.com. And I'll put a link to a video about this in the description. Do not submit this ticket to immigration. For an METV, all they want to see is your one-way ticket to Thailand. Now, I'm sorry if this information about tickets for an METV seems a bit complex, but I've seen so many people get tripped up by this. Immigration only wants to see a one-way ticket for a multiple entry tourist visa. Your port of arrival is International Airport. It's generally easier to enter Thailand by air than by sea or overland. Indicate whether you're arriving on a chartered flight or a scheduled commercial flight. Most of you will be entering on a scheduled commercial flight. Indicate the flight number, which usually has some letters and numbers, and answer the three yes or no questions. We're now up to the section that's called Accommodation in Thailand, and you can select your accommodation type. Now here I've selected a hotel, and you're asked for the name of the hotel. There's a pull down for the city, and then you'll be asked to supply the zip code. The description for hostels and guest houses is similar. Now if you select a private property or dormitory, you'll be asked for some additional details. Now, if you stay at a private residence or at an Airbnb, that's fine. But you need to make sure the owner of that residence submits a form TM30 to Thai immigration. Hotels, hostels, and guest houses will submit the TM30 form electronically to immigration. You won't even know that they're doing it. But if you stay at a private residence or an Airbnb, you need to make sure that the owner of that residence does report your presence via a TM-30. People have gotten into trouble if the TM-30 hasn't been submitted. Now, for additional accommodation in Thailand, I would just say no. You don't need to supply more than your first hotel stay when entering Thailand. So there's no advantage in providing additional information. So save and click on Next. You're now at the Supporting Documents section of the visa application. The first two items, the biodata page of the passport or travel document and the photograph taken within the last six months, have already been uploaded. 
Item three is a document indicating your current location. Normally, that's your driver's license. But if you have some other residence document, you can submit that. But in most cases, the easiest thing to submit is your driver's license. If you're family traveling to Thailand, each family member must apply for an individual visa. There is no family visa. Children don't have a driver's license. So for item three, you can upload the driver's license of a parent for the child's application. Item four is your travel booking confirmation, which is your airline ticket. In the case of a single entry tourist visa, this is a one-way ticket to Thailand and either a return ticket or an onward ticket. In the case of a multi-entry tourist visa, I strongly suggest that you submit a one-way ticket from your home country to Thailand or a sequence of tickets from your home country to Thailand if you're stopping at other countries before you arrive in Thailand. Please let me know if immigration tells you by email that they want something else. Now, your proof of accommodation is your hotel, hostel, or guest house reservation. Now, if you're staying at a private residence or a similar type of accommodation, you need to supply the name, address, and other contact information of the owner of the property. As far as I know, you don't need an invitation letter. Now, if you want to review the documents that you've uploaded, you can press on the blue rectangle in order to see the document. But just a warning, for item three, when I press on the blue button, my application hangs, so be careful of that. Now, if you want to replace an item that you've uploaded, you can press on the yellow rectangle and you can browse for a different item. Now, click on the yellow Save button and then the blue Done button. You'll now see a pop-up that says Confirm Your Application. So, read this over carefully and if all the information is correct, click on Accept and Confirm. If not, click on Cancel and correct your application. You'll see a pop-up that says your application has been successfully created and you can say either submit now or apply more if you want to create additional applications, for example, for family members. Now, in spite of what the pop-up said, your application is not actually submitted at this point. It's in the category of ready to submit. Now, for the submission process and payment, I'm using video that I had shot some time ago. I didn't want to pay and I didn't want to risk messing up my retirement visa. Please let me know in the comments if the payment process has changed. Click on the small box to the left of the application that you submitted. Then click on the yellow rectangle in the upper right that says proceed to payment. Now you'll see the fee for your application on the right hand side where it says payment info summary. Make sure that the information is correct and then click on the yellow rectangle that says pay now. Now you'll be shown a page that allows you to pay by credit card. Fill in the information and click make payment. You'll be taken back to the e-visa dashboard where you'll see your application. Now instead of saying pending payment, it should say processing. If there's a problem with your application, you'll get an email from the consulate or embassy describing what you need to do to fix the problem. You'll receive an email with a description of your e-visa and the e-visa document itself. That, of course, you'll want to print out and bring with you. Once you're notified that your e-visa has been approved, if you go back to the dashboard, you'll see that your application has moved into the status finished. Be sure to check the description of this video for any corrections. Well, that's the whole process. So uh, good luck with your visa application. If you want updates on this video, you can subscribe. And if you found this video useful, please buy one of my novels. you find instructions for how to purchase one of these books in the description. Well, thanks for watching.